Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Health. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I'm honoured to rise in this House today to talk in support of Bill C-2, an act to amend Canada Pension Plan. The Canada Pension Plan Investment Board Act and the Income Tax Act this is an extremely important piece of legislation that will help millions of hardworking Canadians from coast to coast to coast, including many in my riding of Brampton West. Opponents critical of this legislation often cite the fact that we have hardworking Canadians struggling to make end meets today. I have residents from, the, from my riding in Brampton West call and meet with me on a regular basis to express how difficult it has become to support their families. Let me start with the story, Madam Speaker. I met with a couple with three children from my riding a year ago, last November, at a coffee shop before my constituency office even opened. Both parents worked and the father had a second part-time job, yet this family was struggling. They were barely able to feed their children. Unfortunately, their story has become too common in our country. Canadian families that work hard, so hard, should not be struggling. The same family visited me again a couple of months ago in September. They asked me if I could thank our Prime Minister on their behalf. The Canada child benefit that our Prime Minister has championed has taken a huge burden of this family. The increase in the Canada student grants has given this family hope that their children will be able to attend university one day. This is just one of the many examples of families that have been positively impacted by the reforms our government has introduced to address the urgent issues facing Canadian families. Short-term stimulus is extremely important. However, to generally serve Canadians, our government must deliver for Canadians in the long term as well. We need to give Canadians hope for their future. We need to ensure all Canadians are given the opportunity to have a strong, safe and secure retirement. Ensuring that all Canadians have the support of a pension plan that helps them maintain their standard of living after they retire is essential to achieving this objective. Canadians value the long-term pension security provided by the Canada Pension Plan since its inception over 50 years ago by Lester B. Pearson's government. One of the harsh realities of today's economic climate is that it is becoming increasingly difficult for Canadians to plan and save for their retirement years. The cost of living in Canada continues to spike sharply. The retirement savings and pension plans of Canadians are not keeping pace. The life expectancy of Canadians is going up. As a result, an increasing number of Canadians will be forced to reduce their standard of living in their retirement years. I've heard these issues loud and clear at the doorsteps, in our town halls, at community events, and in my constituency office. Last week, one of my constituents said to me, if it is this difficult now, what will I do when I retire and need to live on a fixed income? What will our grand grand grandchildren do? How will they support themselves in their retirement? This is a real and growing concern for middle-class Canadians. As I said, the cost of living is, in Canada is rising. The cost of food is increasing, particularly healthy foods. The cost of leasing an apartment is increasing. Transportation costs continue to go up. These trends are expected to continue. These trends will increasingly burden Canadian families in their retirement <coughs> years. And I see that you pointed out that my time is up for now. I will continue this debate after question period. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. The Honourable the Minister of Health has six minutes remaining in her speech. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and again, thanks for allowing me to continue my speech on an extremely important piece of legislation. As I was saying, last week, one of my constituents said to me, if it is this difficult now, what will I do when I retire and need to live on a fixed income? What will our grandchildren do, and how will they support themselves in their retirement? This is a real and growing concern for middle-class Canadians. The cost of living in Canada is rising. The cost of food is increasing, particularly healthy foods. The cost of leasing an apartment is rising. Transportation costs are going up. These trends are expected to continue, and these trends will increasingly burden Canadian families in their retirement years. 
As a result of the, of the techn technological advancements, Canadians are living longer and healthier lives. In 1971, a 65-year-old Canadian was expected to live the age of 79. Today, the expectation has risen to 87. The numbers continues to improve, continues to rise. However, this also increases the risk that Canadians will outlive their savings. Today, 1.1 million Canadian families with major income earners approaching retirement are at risk of not having enough saved for their retirement. This is about a quarter of families approaching retirement. We need to take action to help ensure this trend does not continue. Fewer Canadians have access to a workplace pension plan, and even fewer have access to a defined benefit workplace pension plan. In 1981, about 34 percent of private sector employees had workplace pension plans. Today, this figure is close to 24 percent and continues to drop. After working hard for 40 or more years over their lifetime, Canadians deserve better, Mr. Speaker. A stronger Canada pension plan is a critical priority for middle-class Canadians and those working hard to join it. Our government has developed a responsible, long-term solution to address this issue. The enhancements to the Canada pension plan proposed in Bill C-26 will provide real and meaningful change for all Canadians. Enhancing the Canada pension Canada Pension Plan will give Canadians a larger public pension, in turn helping them retire with dignity. I'm proud of our government's Honourable Minister of Finance and all of the Canadian Provincial Finance Ministers for prioritizing an enhancement to the Canada Pension Plan and for reaching a bold and historic agreement to deliver for the benefit of each and every Canadian, Mr. Speaker. Working Canadians currently receive a pension that is one quarter of their eligible earnings. This figure could increase to one third of eligible earnings under the proposed plan. This is a meaningful and significant change. To ensure that our most vulnerable Canadians are not held, held back by the changes, the working income tax benefit will be increased. The increase in the working income tax benefit will roughly offset the incremental Canada Pension Plan contributions for low-income workers. Only the contributors which, which make the additional contributions will be able to receive the benefits of the enhancements. This important feature of our nation's pension plan legislation would ensure that each generation pays for its own benefits and that our Canadian pension plan remains financially sustainable. If the enhancement Enhanced Canada Pension Plan has been implemented in the past, instead of the 24 percent of families that are approaching retirement at risk of not having adequate retirement savings, that number would be closer to 18 percent. This represents a life-changing difference for many hard-working middle-class families that will likely struggle to maintain their standard of living through retirement under the current system. The proposal will make a meaningful impact for all Canadians. This means more money to put towards living expenses for retirees, more money to put towards housing, more money to put towards food for health services such as prescription drugs, and the list goes on, Mr. Speaker. Ensuring that Canadians have more money in their pockets at retirement through the proposed Canada Canada Pension Plan changes would stimulate our economy in perpetuity, creating long-term growth. Canadians have given our government a clear mandate to ensure that all workers have a minimum level, level of financial security as they retire. All Canadians deserve to retire with dignity and to have the opportunity to maintain their standard of living in their retirement years. Mr. Speaker and honourable colleagues, it is our responsibility to support legislation that would have such a meaningful impact on the day-to-day -day lives of Canadians in their retirement years. On behalf of the residents of Brampton West, I proudly support the proposed enhancements to Canada Pension Plan and I encourage all parliamentarians to vote in favour of Bill C-26. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Short Park, Fort Saskatchewan.
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, two specific questions for the member about this proposed uh, pension change. One is the government, of course, cut back on tax-free savings accounts. Uh, they're concerned about people being able to save for retirement. We would ask why not let people save for their own retirement. And secondly, the government speaks often about concerns about current seniors. Uh, they should be frank about the fact that this program isn't aimed at current seniors at all. There'd be a variety of mechanisms, uh, such as, for instance, cutting taxes for seniors, cutting taxes across the board, but especially for vulnerable seniors. It would actually help seniors who need the help right now. So why are they increasing taxes, reducing the capacity to save, uh, in a way that doesn't actually help our current seniors at all, but adds additional burdens for our businesses in the present time. Why is the government proceeding in that direction when they have much better, much more effective alternatives available? The Honourable uh, Prime Minister Secretary to the, to the Minister of Health. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank the Honourable Colleague for his question. Mr. Speaker, Canadians want to see reforms to the Canada Pension Plan. Canadians want and deserve the opportunity to retire with dignity. Our government, under the leadership of our Prime Minister, has illustrated our unwavering commitment to assisting senior citizens. Our government has increased guaranteed income, income supplement payments for single seniors. Our government rolled back changes to old age security, reducing the eligibility, eligibility age back to 65 from 67. And our government has invested in affordable housing infrastructure. This legislation governing the Canada Pension Plan requires that individuals that make the additional contributions receive the increase in benefits associated with higher contributions. Mr. Speaker, this, re this reform was established in the 1990s to ensure that Canada Pension Plan remains fully funded and financially sustainable. Canadians are asking for a more secure retirement, and our government plans to do just that. Thank you. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Hamilton Mountain. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I appreciate my colleague's uh, speech, and, and, um, and I, 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 did, I listened to it with great interest. And earlier, um, she had made a mention, um, the member had mentioned that what a great result it is for the people of the middle class for the income tax breaks. But it, it, it did not include people that made $44,000 or less with no children or their families. And on, and on this bill, what she, she had mentioned, or, or the member has mentioned about how important this bill is for the middle class, and they're looking for long-term solutions. But apparently, uh, Mr. Speaker, it eliminates the people for ch raising children and the people that are living with disabilities. So what is the long-term solution for them um, going forward? Honourable Parliament Secretary to the Minister of Health. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank the Honourable Member for his question. Mr. Speaker, Bill C-26 will benefit all Canadians. Canadians deserve a strong, safe and secure retirement. And our government has, has demonstrated and illustrated an unwavering commitment to creating equality and opportunity for women and persons with disabilities. disabilities. We're aware that more could be done with respect to dropout provision of disability and child rearing to make sure that this expansion is as inclusive as possible. However, as my colleague just no also knows, in order to make any changes to the plan, we need agreement with the provinces. The Minister of Finance will raise the dropout provisions at the next provincial and territorial finance minister's meeting in December and the context of the triennial review of the Canada pension plans. Canadians are asking Mr. Speaker for a secure retirement and our government is committed to delivering on that. Bravo. Thank Excellent. you. We have time for one more short question and response. The Honourable Member for Sherwood Park, Port Saskatchewan. Mr. Speaker, quite simply, the Prime Minister just didn't answer a simple question I asked, so I'll ask again, and I hope, hope she answers. Now, the OAS and CPP changes that they talk about do not help current seniors. What she is talking about imposes costs on current businesses and on the current economy. We know that businesses are going to suffer. Some businesses are going to close as a result of this, but it provides absolutely no relief or benefit to current seniors. So why isn't the government contemplating proposals which actually provide benefit to current seniors and strengthen our economy for the future? Why aren't they looking at some of these more effective alternatives that empower the private sector rather than the direction that they're going? The Honourable Member for Brampton West. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank my honourable colleague for his question again. Uh, as I said, a stronger national pension plan will make our economy and Canadian businesses more sustainable. 
Our government has made a strong commitment to helping small and medium-sized businesses to innovate and grow. Small and medium-sized businesses are the backbone of our economy. As Canadians retired with their enhanced Canada pension plan, they will have more money in their pockets to spend, Mr. Speaker. They will purchase goods and services from businesses and in turn stimulate our economy. This is a long-term vision that we're looking at, Mr. Speaker, and we will continue to and deliver on the commitments that we made. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.